You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help others with the game. Can you please state your name for the record? Shit, I'm Sting. Sting, how did you come up with that name? I guess my mama said I smell bad as a baby. Huh. It's just a name that stuck, just like shit. I'm Sting. Uh, where is your hometown? Pomona, California. High school you attended? Pomona High. Pomona High, okay. A lot of mischief you got into? Amongst some things. Amongst some things, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. So, um, what made you decide to become a comedian? Well, I've been clowning all my life, so it, it's always been there. Just, I, I guess I just wanted to try it last year and stepped out there, and I liked it. Well, last year, ain't you like about 45? 43, but 40. it's never too late to start. Mm, that's the, I feel you know. So how do your wife feel like you started this new passion of yours <coughs> so late in your life? Well, she was one of the people that actually was pushing me towards it. Like, you should try it, you should try it. But you know how men is, sometimes we scared to do shit like that. I don't want to stand in front of nobody and talk on a microphone. Yeah, because um, I was invited to a little private party, and you were supposed to be the comedian for the party, but you didn't show up. What happened at that event? Well, actually, I did show up. I just didn't touch that microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I ate what we call cheese. You know what I mean? I, che I cheesed out. But let them present a mic now to see what happened. So where do you do your comedy at? Wherever there's a mic, man. So what is your ultimate goal of being a comedian? Man, doing something that ain't never been done, man. Just going a long ways in this game, having longevity. Longevity. Consistency. Huh? Well, you, what do you consider your longevity kind of short since you're already 43, nigga? Yeah. I mean, some people might, but not me. You know, you only did when you uh, quit trying. So I got a lot of living to do. OK, OK, man. So what's your biggest challenge as a comedian? Well, I think it is probably getting to shows and getting people to fuck with me more and, you know, being able to put myself out there. Building a brand, as they call it nowadays. So when did you realize you was funny? I've been funny since I came out the womb. I mean, I'm not saying you look funny, but when did you know you was funny, man? Man, since I came out, I, I was born that way. So what was the biggest, what was some of the biggest mistakes as a new comedian you made? Trying to be like other people, do that kind of style, something that don't fit me. Okay. The only thing that's gonna work is you gotta be yourself. Yeah, I heard in the streets that if one of your fellow comedians stole one of your jokes. Well, he ain't my fellow comedian, but shit like that happened, you know? You gotta take the bitter with the sweet. Okay. Come along with the game. They, they call it borrowing. Oh, well, I got more stuff in store. What was the weirdest thing you have ever seen in the whole comedian world? Ooh, as of now, I haven't seen so much. Probably when I just seen somebody just start screaming on the mic and flipping and flopping around like a fish. You get mental patients up in there at open mics sometimes. Shit's hilarious. Now, when you on stage, do you like to get intoxicated or do you like to go with a sober mind? Um, it's probably best with a sober mind, but me, I like to stay with a little slight buzz, not too fucked up to where you slurring and don't know where you're going. I don't let that be my crush. That's just my get down. That's my energy. What's the secret to telling everyday jokes? I mean, what's the formula of being funny? Man, first of all, you got to have a sense of humor. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people think they funny and they not. They, when you tell them you're a comedian, they come up with these jokes and you're like, you're not funny. You got to have a sense of humor. People already, whenever you talk, when you're at the barbecues, domino games, wherever the fuck you at, and everybody laughing at you, usually that's the funny guy that you're looking at. So you think you can go to school to be funny, or it's got to be a natural gift? I mean, some people do go to school and try to do it, but yeah, I do believe it should be natural. So in the comedian world right now, man, where could they find you at? Man, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm stink on everything. 
So you really running with this, I'm Sting. Why not? This is what my family been calling me for years. Why change up the flow? Okay, and so you still smell like shit, though? Man, I am the shit. That's the only way that would go. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're kind of sleepy over there, man. My nigga, you got me in this interrogation room all motherfucking day. No food or nothing but the coffee right here, so we're going we're gonna to fix that shit right now, though. Yeah, go ahead and drink that coffee, man. Wake on. Gotta make sure you don't put no Chris in this motherfucker. I know niggas like you. So, so what 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 makes you so funny? The next Kevin Hart or Chris Rock or Chris Tucker? I mean, who who inspires you to be a comedian? If I would have to say who was the first person that made me feel like I wanted to try it or do the material, it would be Richard Pryor. That was the first movie I ever seen as a kid. I got to see a motherfucker cussing people out for the first time. I heard the records my daddy had when we went to the drive-in. We used to drive your car up. I know you young ass niggas don't know nothing about that. But we drove up and shit. Moms had us head in the trunk of the car. They finally got us out and everything. So I'm watching this shit. This nigga walking across the screen calling bitches bitches and, and, and hoes hoes and grabbing his dick and shit. That shit excited me. So when I went back to preschool the next day, unfortunately I got my ass whooped, but I used a lot of his material and it worked. I got to hump the little messing girl on the slides and everything. So you say Richard Pryor grabbing his dick excited you? No, that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying the nigga sitting up there calling bitches bitches and talking shit. Oh, you just want to make sure we clarify that. Yeah, uh, hey man, your your story is your story. What you like to do in the Comforts of your home is on you. You like to watch Richard Pryor grab his dick? <laughs> <laughs> That's on you, bro, bro. You know, it's a new world. I know things are changing around this motherfucker. Dick might like to see uh, Richard Pryor's dick. I don't know what you like. So, yeah. so um, family, family support. I mean, as your whole family-wise supported this movement, of uh, you becoming this stink, the comedian, Man, I tell you what, they have been. A lot of them been getting down with me, and then you know you got a few. They got a little words to say or whatnot, but nigga don't trip off that because they got to deal with that inside them. You know they got to check the bitch that's running through their veins. I can't help none of that. But for the most, the good outweigh the bad. You know what I mean? So we're gonna ride with the good, and eventually they probably just get on board with. I, I still love them though. And do you incorporate them in your jokes? Hey, if it's funny, man, I'm putting everything in there, so you better watch your ad, because I might know something about you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, my nigga, look what you done gave me. They say loose lips sink ships. Well, these motherfuckers are <laughs> going to stay real tight around this motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. I'm going to keep one. Uh, you see a nigga with a lip hang, you know he's snip. You got to... Fuck her up with you when you talk. So money-wise, man, is the money good? Are you making money in this field or what? Not at all, man. I'm paying my dues. That's what they call around this motherfucker. You know, you don't just jump straight into money. Some people might lie and say they did. And some people might really be telling the truth. Now, are you one of them comedians uh, doing social media skits and stuff like that? I have done a few. I don't... Just especially go out and do them myself, you know what I mean? But I like watching them and I shit. Mean, but, but would you consider them as real comedians? Com I know they have a chance at becoming comedians. What they are, to me, I don't knock nobody. They are creative as fuck. I, I don't know how to do the shit they do with iPhones, you know? But, hey, it's up for the crowd to choose what they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, what do you call the, what you get up on stage and do? My shit is called Funny Combo. That's my lane. But as far as them dudes and or the females that's doing it, that shit's working for them. You see them on TV, they give a lot of shows. I heard about the ones that wasn't ready, and they probably threw up and pulled a skedaddle and, and shook the place, got the money and left or whatnot. But, hey, if you're trying to do something, you better do it to the fullest, man. Don't just be jumping on this damn internet and fucking up and then the money coming you don't know what the fuck to do and how to do it yeah get your tools together basically because anybody can jump up oh i'm funny than a motherfucker 
How you know now it ain't even so much skits. It's just a bunch of motherfuckers trying to do some cloud chasing shit. You got motherfuckers running down the street, jumping through police cars, doing dumb yeah, yeah, shit just to get called, noticed. Yeah, I wouldn't even call that comedian. But this is jackass. Yeah, dumbass. <laughs> That's what we call them that. You know, and then you got a lot of people doing shit where we call it cooning. You know what I mean? They they doing shit just to be noticed. It's like cloud chasing, but it's cooning. You you bucking your eyes, you rubbing your lip. You know what I mean? And no no disrespect to the people that eyes is bucked out of them. <laughs> Cause I know a couple big eye people in my family. But you know when you snatching off your clothes and jumping all over the ground just to try to get a laugh, man, that's cooning, man. Get your shit together. I must agree with that. Yes. Yeah. Be with that silly bullshit, man. You step your game up. You get your change up that way. So on the social media tip, man, are you still learning or you got that content or what? As far as what? Uh, building your following. Well, shit, I got help from the grind face, man. They 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 got control of that, man. For me, they they make sure I, the right people is following me and I'm following the right people. You know, that's, that's some of them is kind of strange, you know what I'm saying? You yeah, got so niggas want to be laying in bed with their shirt off, talking about, oh, I woke up like this. I don't want to see all that bullshit. Niggas with hearts around their head, man. You know, some stuff I ain't caught up to, or I probably never will. I mean, that's probably your fan base, though. You can't discriminate against your fan base. I don't want to see it on the picture. I can't like your pictures if you're sitting up there laid up in bed with your chest out. Leave that to the woman. You put your motherfucking tank top on, nigga. Go stand up against the wall with your pit bull in your hand. You, oh, come on, man. You know what time it is. You condone that shit, huh? Know what type of nigga you is. Look at you. Don't act like you don't know that now. Okay, but we're going to move on to the next question. Oh, now you want to move on, huh? <laughs> you want to hear? Come on, fess up. Now I'm asking the question. <laughs> Why a 43-year-old man got no facial hair? You know what? Because the pussy I ate when I was about 16, because I started off with a beard like motherfucking, uh, what's his name? Barry White. But, you you know, they was called hood rats, they thoughts now. Well, I called a hood rat. I lost this side of my mustache first. It's just now starting to grow back. This was like 94. So I actually looked real grown in eighth grade. But, you know, now I'm, I'm restarting it. I had some tainted pussy, fuck it. That's what it was. <laughs> so, Mr. State, um, down in my files right here. Oh, you got files? Yeah, I got a little paperwork on you. You got paperwork on me? Yeah, back in your teenage years, they used to call you um, Don King. Well, oh, that was a little bit before teenage years. Somebody gave you the wrong file. Mm, you probably got See, numbers mixed up. Here. I, they called me Don King, right? And I was the best fight promoter, in, well, not promoter, instigator in Pomona at the time. Started around 83, 84. I had my little cousin sitting in the living room. You know, the mom and them done took the county money, then went off to Vegas and left all the kids at home, the older cousin watching the little one. Just so happened I was him. I would get bored, it, it ain't nothing else to do. They don't want us to go outside, I can't leave them, so I'm gonna make a ring with the couches that my mama got. I wrap up some nice clean socks, not the dirty ones, you know, put some clean socks on their hand. We didn't do weight class though. Big, it didn't matter if you are big or tall, you know, we just did it by age. You know, you could be fat and, you know, bow-legged with one good eye, but you was gonna get your ass in there and fight. So, in my mind, I felt I was toughening up everybody. I didn't have nobody to fight me. Nobody wanted to fight me because I was, I had some pretty good skills, you know what I mean? At, at this uh, fighting shit. So I would take my little cousins and some kind of way I would manipulate them and make them mad as fuck at each other. She said this or he said that. And it was on from there. They, we get busy. But they love me for it because I made them tough motherfuckers. Ain't no busters in my motherfucking family. Well, hold on, wait a minute. I ain't gonna speak on him though. But let's you go. We go past that. We gonna leave that out there. Okay, so you didn't find any complaints. I mean, there are some formal complaints on you. So oh. everybody didn't really like that shit. Man. Oh, that's probably because they got their ass whooped. You know, 
guess if you me. still fucking complaining from the eighties, something wrong with you. You need to. You should have been moved the fuck on with that issue. You grow new teeth from then. What the fuck? So you enjoy being Don King towards the little kids, right? Cause where we are from. So I know it, I did. So was it afraid you? Was you afraid to be in the Mike Tyson situation? Oh hell no! I actually used to like fighting a lot. Well, who did you fight in the streets of Pomona, man? Beat up a lot of people. <laughs> you might know some of them. No, we don't want to name y'all. We ain't gonna people. name them out, but they know who the fuck they is. They got these rights and lefts. So you will consider yourself a troublemaker in the uh, city of Pomona? Back then. Back then, we was talking about the 60s? No, we talking about the 80s, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have been a bad motherfucker in the 60s, too. So no, I probably would have been pimping if I was in the 60s. So in the 80s, um, your game bang was pretty high in the 80s. Yeah. Well, you look like one of them dark-skinned crip dudes. No, I, I, I tried to be a crip, but they had too many motherfucking rules that you got to remember. And I couldn't remember all that shit, so I wouldn't have found the smallest gang in Pomona, which was, you know, Pie Rules, Blood. They had no rules, really. You know, you just walk around, look mean, and nobody fuck with you. You know, you don't leave out of that motherfucker. But the Crips, in the 80s, it was like 10,000 of them, and it was only about 500 Bloods. Uh, and in my hood only consisted of about 30 niggas. So I was, I was a G real fast. By the time I was 15, I was on top of the game. <laughs> That's the thing. You always pick the smallest game because they got less rules. You get, when you get them big ones, they want you to go shooting, stabbing, stealing, and doing. My niggas had them motherfuckers was in jail. So I was running the little niggas around there sometimes. Man, I'll fix your big wheel. Show me a picture of your mama's titties. You know, that's how we did our day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I show them how to put their bike chains on if they let me sniff their sister's panties. We got, you know, I used to know how to work around it. It didn't sound like he was a part of her, man. Oh, uh, very much so. <laughs> you know, how else was I going to get my issue? You know, and especially in Pomona, because you got a lot of niggas that thought they was pretty boys and shit. And I was a dark-skinned nigga with a curl, that, and the boards was in them. You know, Wesley Snipes and them hadn't came out yet. So you say you got a curl? Oh man, dripping all the way down my shoulders. What happened? Man, that shit fried, died, and laid my shit all the way out the back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Air baby mama shit. I, you know, I woke up one day, this a patch was going over here. Then and then I called the bitch on the on the phone from jail, and she didn't answer. Another patch fell out. <laughs> That's the worst feeling, huh? You call your girl from jail, she don't answer. It, man, you're you going to lose your perm <laughs> fast. You know what I'm saying? I've seen plenty of niggas lose their ponytails on pillowcases in there. It's all her in the streets, sir, man. You got like five different baby mamas. Well, shit, I got about ooh, two, three of them motherfuckers, you know. You know, they ain't nothing to holler about. Hey, but, uh, you got all boys, right? Six of them. Six boys, man. Six fucking Don Kings running around. No, nah, these motherfuckers some spoiled ghetto kids. They <laughs> talk like they done been in the street. Them niggas ain't left the motherfucking couch yet. They sitting in my garage right now, probably smoking up a weed. <laughs> yeah, nigga, I know about the streets. Lying like a motherfucker. Got them niggas food out there where I live. <laughs> hey, they know how to talk a good one because they heard my story, so they try to put it all together and incorporate it with their lies and all that shit. But yeah, them some spoiled ghetto kids. They can't die king, nothing. But uh, truthfully, they doing their thing. I got um, my two oldest, I believe. They rapping and stuff. They got a new group. Check that shit out. The new OFTB. OFTB. Yeah, I've heard of them. They're pretty sick, man. Yeah. You know, they got that scam lead. They got some hot little shit. You know, it's it's... They bridging the gap because at first I was not well, with all the bullshit. This interrogation ain't about the man. Well, what is? I that mean, you asking on, about my? Three, they always like niggas. Always trying to get. See, that's what I'm more. saying. I'm gonna have to demonstrate some of my '80s shit on you up in this motherfucker. See, <laughs> he thought I was 40. I got these scars for nothing. I told you, you better ask around Pomona from the west. 
to will his own self. Well, to me, niggas over there, right? But the north, the west, and probably south too. Uh, you got to ask them niggas who's get socking their ass up in the early yeah, days. So. Um, back to the the whole <laughs> before comedian. Since you started to be a comedian at forty three, mm -hmm. I mean, you had a whole life before you. So what was you doing before this comedian shit? Shit, nigga, selling weed like a motherfucker, hustling, making money, feeding my kids, paying bills. And what the fuck you keep saying at 43 like I'm dead, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you about two years behind me. <laughs> motherfucker, act like you 80 years old when you uh, 40 and shit. I'm just, I'm just trying to clarify. That's called a second breath, nigga. A second breath, okay. Yeah. Most call it a midlife crisis. That's at 50. Said he couldn't afford a car, bed. he said, fuck it, be a comedian. Hey, hey, that's the same reason you going to a barber lining up a hair that's balding. I don't know how to figure that shit out all the time, I think. You got them spaces up there. You might as well join me. You look about 42, too. But see, this is the thing. Don't ever fucking give up. I don't care if you're 67. If you're still on this motherfucker breathing, it's for a purpose. Don't get to sitting on the couch talking about, I ain't doing that shit no more. That's what people get fucked up, letting people put a, a cap on what you should do by and, your and age. Letting, and letting people feel like you too old to start something new. Yeah, I don't you put a cap trying. on it. Yeah. You know, I appreciate that because I ain't, that was one of my biggest things too. It's like, man, I might be too old to be doing this. Then you think about it, well, shit, nigga, you too old to be selling weed out your motherfucking house, you know what I'm saying? Taking penitentiary chances over some dime bags. I agree, because if you're 40 years old still selling nickels, man, yeah. you, you ain't the best. Well, they don't sell no nickels. I wish I would give a nigga a nickel. <laughs> at, at 43, you is supposed to have a dispensary, though. Um, I mean, I ain't going to say stop what you're doing, but nigga, kind of invest in the building and do your thing. <laughs> you know I see a couple of them niggas that's my age hanging out at the liquor store selling their weed and their drugs and they got their gray braids in there, man. Y'all cut that shit out too. That shit is nonsense. It's just preposterous, man. Just stop the bullshit. You can spell preposterous. Hey, look. Preposterous, goddammit. <laughs> hey, don't hate because I know big words and shit. Man, we don't expose all that, what you was doing. Hey, well, look but, here. Um, this is how we gonna handle this situation. You wanna explain right? that? Do I want? No, I ain't answering no more of your goddamn questions without my lawyer, buddy boy. With your foul having ass, get me the fuck out of here. Hey, turkey. Grind face.